Hi, this is uh, Wes from uh, W Farmstead. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a uh, yearly maintenance on some of our equipment. This is a uh, Grasshopper 321D, okay? It has a 21 horsepower Kubota diesel engine in it. So uh, what I did is uh, I kind of uh, took it and blew it out real good, make sure it's kind of clean. Usually what I would do is I would take a uh, pressure washer and spray foam it and then pressure wash it all off and clean it up real good, but we don't have water out here right now. So I can't do that. So what I had to do was uh, take the uh, air hose and uh, spray it out as best I could. So uh, what I did was spraying it out. I've already gone over. What I do is I go over and make sure that uh, I check belts Make sure all the belts are good. Um, you know, make sure they're good and tight. And then I check uh, bolts, make sure bolts are real good. So I've gone around this whole thing and I made sure all the bolts are real good and bolts are tight. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go on ahead and do the uh, grease it. Okay. So, uh, the uh, 321 only has um, basically five grease points on it. So it's there's not very many grease points. One on each of the um, spindles, since this is a 60 inch deck, you've got uh, on spindle one, mid spindle, and then the uh, other spindle that you've got it. And then you've got on the two front tires here, you've got uh, grease arcs on those. So uh, this one's actually really quick and really easy. But generally, with the spindles, um, we, we can go anywhere from four to six hours mowing out here with the, uh, the amount of area that we mow. So uh, we make sure that every other mowing we take and we grease the spindles on these. Okay? So uh, let's go on ahead and... Uh, I'm going ahead and grease this one first. If you noticed with this lock and lube, they've got a shorter one. This one's a longer one. On this one, on these, uh, on the 321 here to get the uh, outer spindles, it makes it a lot easier. It can be a pain in the butt to get into it because it is pretty much up in there really good. So make sure it's on there. It's on there. So here we go. About how long ago? I think it's probably what eight, eight, ten seconds. Right around. Okay. When you're running these grasshoppers too. You can really tell the uh, spindles and the decks get a little bit noisy when they really need grease. So if you forget to do it, it uh, tends to let you know. Hold on. Yeah, here's one of those. It's a pain in the butt. There it is right there. Okay, there it is. Yeah, see what I'm saying? It can be a pain in the butt to get it on there. There we go. Now on the tires. Go. Okay. 
go. Okay, that's greasing it. So the next thing we're gonna be doing on this is, uh, since I've already checked all the bolts and everything, made sure everything's tight on it. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, go on and change the oil. Now, we haven't put on that many hours, okay, on this. I think we've got like 60, 70 hours. It says every 200 hours to change the fuel filter. Um, I did check the filter, the fuel filters, and the fuel filters look good because I changed them last year. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do them this year, but I'm going to change the oil on this. And uh, I'm going to also, in another video, I'm going to go on ahead and uh, flush the uh, antifreeze on it, flush the coolant, the cooling system on this. Okay. And uh, so... That's it for now, so I'll see you here in a minute and we'll start uh, changing the oil on this thing. Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, change the oil on this 321. What I use is, uh, I use this Amsoil heavy duty diesel marine oil, 15W40. The reason why I use it is this is a uh, older diesel engine um, they don't have the uh, EGRs and they don't have uh, death or anything on them. So this oil has a CI4 plus classification. It's not a CJ classification oil. This is a better oil than your CJs. Okay. So uh, what I'm using is I'm using this on the uh, 321 and I use it on the uh, 721d2 as well so about every other year i take and i run an amsoil engine and transmission flush what i'll do is i'll put half the bottle in this one and then run it for 10 minutes and i'll put half the bottle in the uh, seven the grasshopper 721d2 and uh, the reason why i do it is because everybody who who knows about kubota engines their engines get really the oil gets really, really black on them. So, Amsoil is not a sponsor. And no, Amsoil is not a sponsor. I've just been using it for years. As you can tell, you can see how dirty the oil gets. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is uh, we got the door closed right now on this side, but the other door on the uh, other end of the pole barn is open. But for... Uh, videoing purpose we got the door closed and I'll open it up here in a minute but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and put uh, half of this bottle in here okay okay Now if I can screw the cap back on, I'll tell you. Okay. Okay, so we're at 150. So uh, I've got the uh, 321 started up. So we'll go on ahead and let it run for uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll change the oil on it, okay? Okay. So it's been 10 minutes, we're going to on. go on and shut that down. Wow, that's, well, it's not loud. It's just, yeah, kind of cumbersome. So this 321 is the biggest pain in the butt to change the oil on. So the uh, engine actually sits way up into the frame a little bit. So you have to use extensions to get up in there. And the... Uh, the drain plug is a 19 millimeter on it. So I'm gonna go on and get down there and try and get it. And then maybe Tanya can get in on the other side and try and show. We're gonna try, I can't guarantee anything, but it is the thing that's a pain in the butt is on this uh, 321, it sits up into the frame a little bit and you got about that high that it sits up in there. So it's kind of hard to get into. And you know what, another thing I better do in a hurry,
is I better put on some gloves, some rubber gloves. And of course, one of the other things I haven't done yet, which I should have been doing during that 10 minutes, but I was actually enjoying the company of my wife and talking. So I need to get a, uh, a rag. So, so there's my rag. Let me take off the watch. Like I said, I should have had this done, but you know, I was talking with my wife, so. Yeah, that's a good thing. Okay. Let's see if I can, oh, look at that. There's a thumb out of that one. Well, this is the one that's gonna be up in there. Daggone Harbor Freight. Those are the nine mil, they're the heavy ones. So they're the really expensive ones. Oh well, Let's see if I can get this one on without ripping anything. Okay. All right. Before I do, I'll leave that tightened for right now. So, take that off. Yep, go on ahead and get down on your knees and see if you can get in there. Yeah, I don't know what you can see, but there's a frame part here. You can see this frame where my hand is and the drain plug's right up in there. So it's kind of hard to get up into. Oh, and I sat there and whacked the daggone camera. <laughs> With the bolt. So let me help. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. A lot of this right now is just feel. I'm trying to do it like this. So I hope I did. Fuck the dummy. Take two. Yeah, take two. Oh my gosh. That was dumb. Oh, that was dumb. It may not be. Okay. All right. So we got her loose. This is the thing that's hard about it. See if I can get my hand up in here. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, so the other thing that I've noticed, this 321 seems like the angle is a little bit weird. So, yeah, I'll try and lift it up a little bit and it's still dripping. I usually let it drip for a while. Okay. So here's the uh, part number for the uh, filter. I just used the uh, Kubota filter stock. H1JO-32430. Yep. So I just used the uh, stock or the uh, OEM Kubota. And uh, the reason why I do that is because uh, if you've ever watched Messix and seen them, they uh, cut open several different 
kinds of uh, oil filters and uh, their uh, Kubota OEM filters are probably one of the best. So, I know they're not a sponsor. yeah, no, Kubota is not a sponsor. So, let me see. So, I'm getting ready to change out the filter. What I usually do is put the date and the hours on the filter, as you can see on that filter that's down there. So this is 589.5. So it's 589.5 hours. So that had 555.4. So it's only what? 39 hours this year. Wow. So the date is 4 1 23. And what did I say that was? 589.5. Okay. So I generally loosen it up just a little and that way uh, with the oil down or with the catch pan down there for the oil it'll uh, catch that and I won't get a mess hopefully all over the place because it's kind of funny the way this is is the uh, about that far off of where the uh, oil filter meets the uh, block of the engine you have about that much space for that oil to drop down. And if you don't let it drain, it gets all over the place. So. Put that right there. Okay. So generally what I do with the filters is I'll put a little bit of oil in it. I don't want to put, put very much because what will happen is it'll... Uh, spill out when I go to put it on. So that allows me to get oil around the ring and then it starts getting a little bit of oil in there and it'll take and it'll uh, soak into all the material and stuff. Okay. And check and make sure that the uh, gasket from the oil filter doesn't stay on there. Then we take, and we put the new one back on. Now, uh, I will only hand tighten these, okay? I do not use the tool to tighten them because you don't need to. And when you talk to them or when you uh, read, they tell you not to do that. So, get this thing on here, okay? There we go. Okay. So that's hand tight. <laughs> All right. Next thing we got to do is uh, put the uh, drain plug back in. Here's where I'll tend to get a little bit messy. Gloves again. Yeah, they're a little bit thicker. Oh my gosh, my hands are sweating under there. Whew. Man. Stinky hand. Okay, so what I do is I hit the oil and it puts up today's date. Our engine hours are 589.5. Oh, I'm not ready to get it. Let me get that out of the way. So, odometer is 589.5 hours. I use the uh, Amsoil Heavy Duty Diesel Marine Oil. Okay, so I hit the check mark and it logs it. Okay, oh, I gotta do the air filter too. And we'll be doing the coolant at another time. See the uh, fuel filter I did last year. Um, I did just grease it. 
So that was 589.5. 5. Check mark. Okay, I use JT high temp grease is what I use. Red Molly high temp grease. Okay, <clears throat> so you can kind of see, well, I did, I checked belts. So 589.5. Uh, put down here in the notes. Check belts. So it keeps track of everything that you do in your service history and everything else. So <clears throat> let's take a look at this air filter in a hurry so I can knock this off. Oh yeah. We usually clean these out, but it's time to replace this air filter. So. Yep, so you can kind of see, you know, it is kind of gray. Give me just a second. Okay, so pretty much this one being bad and dirty, it's going to be bad on that one. So we'll go on and change it on that one too. Okay. That's what you got. Like. Okay, so this is a, an original OEM filter. That's the filter for this uh, 321D that has the Kubota 21 horsepower engine. Okay. No, Kubota's not a sponsor. <laughs> and no, Kubota's not a sponsor. Would be nice though. Yeah, no. We don't do enough. But that's all right. We're just, like I said, our main purpose for doing this is so that. Uh, I can do this by myself with my grandchildren. Yeah. That's one thing. Okay. May use that later on. Okay. So I got that. Well, you can kind of tell. Look at that. Different. Yeah. There's a nice big difference in it. So you got that right like that. And yes, if you noticed, what I pulled off was that washer. Comes with a new washer. If you don't get OEMs, like you get a uh, third party, they tend to not come with those washers. I've noticed that. Been there down that road before. So, and it's not that much more expensive. Maybe two, three bucks more to get the, the original equipment. And I'd rather have the OEM, especially after I saw that stuff on uh, Messix with the, uh, when they tore apart the oil filters. <sighs> oh yeah, look at this. All kinds of... So, yep, now we'll go back in here, and uh, right there, we didn't clean the air filter. We replaced it, and then hit that check mark, and then we go back. Okay, so you can kind of see. Like uh, the skeleton grapple, the I've got a 56 inch Kubota three point tiller. Here's the B2601, the backhoe. So I keep track of every time when I do stuff on these greasing, you know, checking bolt tightness on that. Um, B2601, I have to check the air filter and clean the air filter and uh, change the engine oil and grease, front end loader and everything on it so that's coming up too i'll be doing a 
yearly maintenance and then the uh, 1920 tractor you can see you got engine oil air filter coolant filter uh, tires differential oil transfer case oil you know all that stuff i had done that within the last um, 200 hours so so i won't be doing that this year but here's a neat little thing so next thing i'm going to be doing is the uh 721 but yeah so uh this is like i said this is a little uh program out there tractor pal. called tractor pal and uh it's nice because i can keep track of everything i even go down through here and you can see the the flatbed trailer you can see when I, uh, I've got a, I just put the flatbed trailer in there. And what I need to do is I'll put in uh, um, tires and then uh, lubing the, uh, the wheels. Now where's the PJ dump trailer? Here's a PJ dump trailer. So I put it in. Okay, there's no hydraulic filter on it. But I put in tires and the last time I greased it. So you saw when I uh, grazed it on 212 23 and stuff. So I try to keep this way. I keep track of everything and all the different equipment I have. It's a pretty cool little, uh, little program there. Definitely for sure. Nice little program. So it tells me like with the Dan user intimidator, I put in when I grease it and everything and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Okay. So that's the next thing we go to is the 721. So uh, this one's pretty much done. That's uh, 321. That's what I do with the Grasshopper 321. Like I said, I've already went over, made sure bolts and everything are tightened. That's one thing you want to do is make sure your bolts are tightened. Check your air filter or your air pressures and uh, make sure all, all your air pressures and everything are good. Um, I am going to uh, take and uh, flush the uh, coolant on this one, like I said. So that'll probably be in another video coming up. And uh, but yeah, so that's that's the Grasshopper 321.